afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 10th annual global meeting of the Women's Forum in Deauville. My name is Jillian Martin Mears from Bright Green Learning, and I'm delighted to be the MC at the, this year's annual meeting. Like many of you, for me, it's not only a welcome but a welcome back. This is my fourth meeting, and I suspect many of you are also returning. And I'd like to see just who this relates to. I'd like to ask you if you've been to one or more women's forum meetings. Could I invite you to please stand up so we can see who's been here? One or more? Okay, quite a few people. If you've been to two or more women's forum events, can you stay standing? Two or more? What about four or more women's forum events? Still quite a few people standing. Five or more? Okay, I'm going to stop here. I think that's pretty good. So, ten. Oh, oh, so quite a few people with ten. We'll definitely give you a round of applause. So you see, who, know, who knows how this forum works? These are the resources amongst us. They know how to make the most of every hectic moment of this next couple of days. And they know where to go if you need to take a break and just reflect on what you've heard or what you're learning. Maybe you even want to kick your shoes off and walk through the beautiful sands of the beaches of Deauville if we get a clear moment in our sky. So this year, we're 1,300 people who are convening in Deauville, 1,300. Amongst us, there are trailblazers, entrepreneurs, innovators, leaders, practitioners, and we're going to be meeting together here in this beautiful Planagora space over the next couple of days. But we'll also be meeting in the Agoras, and those are here in the room, these four corners. We're also going to be meeting in the Discovery Hall, in the social spaces, certainly at the meals and the coffee breaks. All of these places are going to provide opportunities for us to get to know one another. If you think about it, 1,300 people talking together for three days, dreaming, brainstorming, coming up with creative ideas, would you believe that that's 27,300 hours of time we're going to be putting at, uh, towards these issues? That's almost three years, and definitely something good has got to come out of that kind of time. Not only are we very diverse in terms of the background we have, the different sectors we work for, we're also very geographically diverse. And I'd also like to do a little bit of mapping to see where we're all coming from. If you've come to us today from the Americas, so from South America, Mesoamerica or North America, could I invite you to please stand up? You see who's coming to us from the Americas? OK. Welcome to all of you. Great, thank you very much. So, if you've flown from Africa today, if you've come north from Africa, could I invite you to please stand up? We'll look around and welcome you. We have to look. Okay, welcome. Hello. If you've come the long trip from Asia, could I invite you to please come up, to please stand up? So who, are, who is with us from, from Asia? Welcome. Nicely dispersed. What about from Europe? So you have a little bit of a shorter trip. <laughs> Who's here from Europe? Ah. OK, this is a very large group. Welcome. Europe is a very large place. What about from the Middle East? We have some colleagues here coming to us from the Middle East. Please stand up. Let's see where you are. Excellent, welcome. And the last, Oceania. So this is maybe the farthest. Do we have some colleagues here coming from Oceania? You're going to have to wave. Hmm. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good. Welcome. Welcome to all of you. So to add to the 1,300 people who are here in person in the next couple of days, we also need to welcome those who are joining us on simulcast. And I'd like to ask you just to wave at a camera 
to our participants from virtual space. Hello to all of you. We'll be seeing you here in the, in the plenaries. And of course, there are many other people following us on social media. And to them, we'll just say, hashtag, welcome to Deauville. Lots of people are going to be tuning in in the next couple of days. Before our official welcome, I wanted to give you the chance to just meet somebody new who's sitting around you. I'd like you just to take a moment and look at the people sitting around you and just introduce yourself to somebody that you don't yet know. This is going to become a habit in the next couple of days. <laughs> Everyone has a fascinating personal story, so please go ahead, say hello. Okay, please have a seat. Thank you very much for that. These are most certainly conversations that you're going to want to pick up again when we get to our break. The energy in the room is just fantastic. Okay, now let's go to our official opening. I'd like to invite to the stage two speakers who are going to welcome you on behalf of the Women's Forum. I'd like to introduce Lali Weymouth, Senior Associate Editor at The Washington Post, and Veronique Morali, who will be very familiar to many of you as the CEO of Wemedia and the President of the Women's Forum. So please, Lali. Okay, hi, I'm uh, Lally Weymouth from the Washington Post, and Ver Veronique has decided that we're going to stand up here. Um, <laughs> all right. It's um, easier to see all around. It's easier right. to turn around. I might have to put on my glasses due to... Um, but anyway, my mother was an incredibly famous woman in the United States, whom I, I've taken a good look around this room, and I, I realize that many of you are far too young to have heard of her. However, I'll give it a shot. Um, Many years ago, my mother's name was Catherine Graham, and she became publisher of the Washington Post. And, um, okay. So she became publisher of the Washington Post, and tell me if you can't hear over here, in August of 1963 when my father died, who was also publisher of the Washington Post. And my mother had actually never worked a day in her life, unlike most of you in this room. She was not at all, as she would have told you, prepared for the job. In fact, she was totally unprepared. She'd taken care of four of us children, and I was the oldest, and actually I had three younger brothers, and um, she'd done charity work, which is what women in those days did. And so when my father died, people actually assumed that the Washington Post was going to be sold. They, they didn't know what was gonna happen. So anyway, we had a sort of family meeting, and my mother was pretty determined. She didn't need any advice that she was going to, to become publisher of the Washington Post. She was gonna run it, and we were not going to sell it. So I actually, at age 20, wrote her speech to the board, which was, we were not going to sell it, we were going to keep it, and everything was going to be just great. So she delivered this speech, and um, people were highly skeptical. And um, things went on from there. So this was 1963. Now I might have to put on my glasses at this point. Um, and your microphone closer. Uh, what? Closer. Oh, closer? I'm told that it's not close enough. Okay. Um, at, when she was initially at the Post, she initially encountered, as you can imagine, a lot of condescension. There really weren't a lot of powerful women in, in posi high positions at that time, which I know is hard for you to imagine. In fact, for years, she was the only woman on the Fortune 1000 list until Liz Claiborne joined her at the end of the 80s. I mean, it's almost impossible for you to imagine this, but that was the situation. And she was extremely nervous about the whole situation of taking over the post at first. 
although she rose, of course, to do a simply fantastic job. Um, she was, one of the things that infuriated her was in Georgetown, where we grew up in Washington, men and women would separate after dinner. They'd have dinner, then men would go into one room and they'd talk about politics, and women would go into another room and they'd talk about fashion and so forth. My mother was livid about this, and so she refused to go with the women. She went with the men. And this was really w just one of the customs that she put it into, or one of the so-called glass ceiling customs. She finished that one off. And so um, that was the end of that, of women and men separating after dinner. Then, as you all know, um, she encountered a lot of pressure from the Nixon administration over Watergate. Um, they didn't, um, the Washington Post editors wanted to print the Pentagon Papers. And of course, they decided to print the Pentagon Papers a day before she was about to take the company public, which, as you can imagine, the lawyers from the company were not too thrilled about. But she said, print away and she took the company public anyway. So um, it all turned out just fine. But um, it didn't turn out too great for President Nixon, as you know, who uh, <laughs> in the end removed after many threats and people told her she should get bodyguards and she thought that was just ridiculous. So she never got a bodyguard and Rip Nixon fell and that was the end of him and she did just fine. And um, anyway, Basically, the uh, post expanded, as you know, and under her leadership, and both as a business and as a newspaper. And uh, Warren Buffett, of course, who's incredibly famous in, in America, and I assume over here, um, in 1973 became uh, not only, he uh, bought a lot of Washington Post stock and became a close advisor of my mother's and a board member. But she wrote, I believe it was, Actually, it was late in life, she wrote, I was still a curiosity, a woman in a man's world. Yet all this, in a way, was passed when in Business Month ran a cover story on her, ranking the Washington Post as among the, the top five businesses in the country with Apple and Walmart, which, as you can imagine, today, in today's failing, I don't know how to put this delicately, but today, newspapers are really failing all over the United States, so it's almost unimaginable to think of a newspaper being among the five businesses in the country. But anyway, she managed. Now, I know all of you face different challenges. Um, few of you are, are in a position that my mother was in. Few are the first to be in a powerful position. And um, women in this room are doing everything. And I think that maybe you encounter, I know from my daughters, different challenges. Uh, companies sometimes don't accommodate the time that you feel that you need to give to your children. And they also, um, there's the issue of how to balance careers and families, I think for most women, no matter how successful they are. Then of course, there's the issue of women in the tech world. And I think the uh, CEO of Microsoft really nailed that one last week, didn't he? Um, when of course, it's pretty widely known that uh, the tech world is not uh, hot on hiring women. And then when he said that women should really wait for their rewards and if they waited, they would come, I, I doubt that very many of you in this room agree with that. Is that correct? <laughs> that was pretty lame, I thought. And of course, he's tried to apologize all over social media, but it doesn't seem to be going down too well. Anyway, so I think that we, speaking for Berenice, which I'm not speaking for, of course, hope that you'll come away from this conference with new ideas and new thoughts about how to use your own leadership positions, that you will make new friends and will perhaps acquire some new ideas as to how to enhance not only your own careers, but how to think about how you can help other women in, less, in other parts of the world who have less chance to get ahead, perhaps, than yourselves, overcome the, the obstacles that stand in their way. Um, my mother, I believe, would be absolutely astonished at how far we have come and how far you all have come. And I think she'd be very proud, and I'm very proud of you. And I come to congratulate you on your achievements, and I know the next few days will be fun in, and informative, so I hope you enjoy every single minute. And thank you, Veronique, and merci to all of you, and I'm really sorry I don't speak French. Thanks, thanks, Lely. So, uh, welcome everybody to Deauville this year. Um, um, once again, the forums team, they have been very mean to me 
as usual. They always greedy with my time and they only gave me five minutes to talk about a very emotional moment. So let me tell you about those past years and, those, and this future decade to come. So let's figure out this woman's forum as a long journey that we are all embarked on and that all of you make alive each year and each year and each year and I hope it will be true also for the next years. All this is very emotional because for those who started this women's forum 10 years ago, there was some sort of magic, there was a strong commitment. So 10 years later, we are much older, of course, but our commitment remains even stronger because there is so many, much more to be achieved down the road concerning women's presence, women's force all over the world. This year is very emotional also because this will be my last year as president for this Women's Forum. And I wanted to not only thank all of you to come and participate and make this forum so lively, but also I really wanted to thank our sponsors, our partners, um, who have been supporting us all these past years, despite the crisis, despite all their doubts or doubts they might have had on such an initiative which is in the same time a great adventure. So let me thank you. Let me thank Orange, Cartier, Renault Nissan Alliance, but also um, ABB Deloitte, Sanofi Sodexo and GC Deco, not mentioning all the rest of our sponsors. More specifically, I would like to thank my team because it's a dream team. It's the best team ever for this women's forum. I'm, I'm thanking all the team. I would like to maybe call on stage because they, you never see them, but they are doing the real job. My dearest aspiring partners, Jennifer, for program and contents. She's the one. She's the one to imagine all the speakers. She's the real one to make this uh, forum uh, so strong, so sharp, so close to actuality, so everything. And I would like, of course, to to ask Jacqueline Franjou, because <laughs> she's the one. She's the one. With, we shared all these openings for the international and thanks to her we are here today with all these great delegations and I would like to greet the Mexican, the Burmese, the Dubai delegations and all over the year we've started to open this forum internationally. This is only the beginning. We are close forever. <laughs> So, thanks a lot. I, I'm sure that you will be part of this long journey. I would like to thank also publicists and the shareholder because they trust in this forum. Olivier Floro, he was not really convinced about the female matters at the beginning. He's the first ever stronger support and I would like to thank him also, Olivier. <laughs> Okay, so my dear friends, uh, this is only the beginning of a new adventure. Uh, ten, years, ten years ago, we were, we were, I told you, we were uh, totally embarked in this adventure. No doubt that there will be among you uh, the future next two bees for this world, and we do need women at the top. At the top, taking into account that we need to lead for a more equitable world, and this is the topic of this year because it's too strong what we are facing today. We have to fight and to fight and to fight. So enjoy.